All right, one of our segments, the logistical problems that people go through uh, when a hurricane like this hits. We know we're in a uh, business that has antennas and towers and transmitters and trying to get reach the people any way we can, which is Facebook and YouTube, while we're hiring crews to climb 400 feet up tower sites and get us back on antenna-wise. And, but we're no different than other people that have logistics. One of those is Terrebonne General Medical Center. We all heard what they were going through. Uh, people sort of talked on Facebook, but no one really knew what they were going through. So we want to show you a video now of what actually a medical center, a health system goes through in these types of situations and why it was so crucial in a lot of their decision making and Miss Phyllis Peoples uh, had to do some regrouping over there, but they're getting services back. And that's a small miracle when we think about what they went through. Let's roll in that video. All of a sudden, the windows all started blowing in in the patient rooms. It was intense. You could see the fear on the patient's faces, certainly. When we did go to generator power and we lost AC, we lost water pressure. Our roof pretty much exploded, for lack of a better description. To admit that we just can't continue to serve our community and patients was difficult. To evacuate 120 patients is a monumental feat. able to get Oshner, Acadian Ambulance people, and they stood in line and they were trying to transfer our patients. It took a full 24 hours of non-stop transfer. You got to find beds and I got a majority of COVID patients. So you got to find facilities who are able to take these COVID patients. Dr. Nathan Sutton and Dr. Andrea Lorio were with us the whole time. I just wanted to be here so bad. I didn't want anybody else to, to do it. So um, it, it wasn't even a question for me. The event happened Sunday. We decided to evacuate on Monday. Mm -hmm. we, it took us till Tuesday. And by Wednesday or Tuesday, we still trying to figure out how can we offer services. And by Thursday, we were setting up ER services outside and tents and things in our whole ER team. By Friday, we were operational. It's a marvel to watch, but that's where our commitment comes in, is that we are gonna take care of our community. Now we're trying to get services up as quickly as possible as far as what we can. You can see we have emergency services, we have COVID tents, we have, and it really looks like a hospital inside to a degree, and people can walk up, drive up, whatever. We're taking ambulances. My staff's amazing, and the minute we transferred that last patient, we were on how do we open something, and how do we do whatever. And our staff, we meet three times a day. None of us have gone home. And we're coming up, and we're gonna come up quick. Now, I might not be able to do with the services that I had before as quick, but I promise you 24-7, we're gonna work for it, and, and we are. And if people are patient to recognize some of the construction around the building, we'll get you in. We're mm -hmm. going to get you in. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm on go. I'm past mm -hmm. go. And we're going to be back stronger than ever.
pretty incredible. And uh, we're only a couple of weeks out from the storm. And people who were here saw the devastation. People just getting back into town. They, they see the trees down. They see the houses damaged. But they don't see all the debris that blocked the roads and everything else. And it, it just goes to show you what the spirit, the human spirit can do in times like this. And certainly it's people just dig down deep. They pull from within. And you heard me say it before. And we talk about Terrebonne General. And we talk about Chabert. And we talk about Physician Surgery Center. And they also had, I think, St. Anne uh, was damaged. And maybe St. Charles was damaged. A community needs a medical center. I'll say that again. A community needs a medical center. We can't grow a parish. We can't grow a community without a medical center because people, especially elderly, retired people, are going to position themselves where they have medical care. It's so important. That's why you've heard me say it so many times on this channel. Thank you to the medical personnel. Thank you to the medical centers and the hospitals for what you do. Uh, you've been fighting COVID for us for well over a year and a half, and then we get hit by this monster called Ida. So we're there. We're committed. We're pulling for you. We need you. We love you all. Thank you for what you do. And we hope you get up and run in full capacity very soon.